If you're shopping for a saxophone for yourself or someone else and you don't really know much about buying saxophones, this video will help you make up your mind. Hey Better Sax Players, Jay Metcalf here. You know, recently I've reviewed three different entry-level alto saxophones here on the channel. We had the Laid alto saxophone that I bought off of Amazon, the cheapest alto saxophone on Amazon. That video is up to almost two and a half million views. Thank you, YouTube. We then had the Jean-Paul AS400 alto saxophone, which I called perhaps the best saxophone for under $500 that you can buy new. And then last week we had the Yamaha YAS280, a longtime gold standard as far as student alto saxophones goes. It's priced at $1,100. So let's compare each of these instruments. I'm gonna rate these saxophones on a number of criteria and then give each one a score on a three-star scale for each category. At the end, we'll tally up all the stars and find out which one is our winner. Please keep in mind that my scoring system is for what I consider to be entry-level instruments. So three stars in this case will be outstanding for an entry-level saxophone. Links to where you can purchase all three of these instruments can be found in the description below. And by the way, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers and I'm organizing a big giveaway contest to celebrate this milestone. So if you're not already subscribed, get yourself subscribed right now and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. More details on the giveaway contest coming soon. Last thing before we get started, if you own any of these instruments yourself, please let us know in the comment section below your experience with it, how it's worked out for you. This will be very helpful for someone else shopping around and trying to make up their mind. The first criteria is playability. How easily the instrument plays over the full range, how easy it is to get the extreme registers out, the low notes, the high notes, how it feels under your fingers in your hands. All three of these saxophones play very easily. I will say the one that feels the best under my fingers is the Yamaha. I'm giving it three stars. The Jean Paul also feels fantastic under your fingers, plays very easily. I'm also giving it three stars. The laid saxophone, the least expensive one, I'm gonna give two stars because there are a few things that feel slightly awkward with it. And although I can easily get the low notes out, they don't come out as well in tune as they do on these other two saxophones. The next criteria is the sound how beautiful of a sound you can get on each one of these. Uh, I'm gonna play each one of them for you in a second so you can make up your own mind, but I'd like to share with you my thoughts on which one of these sounds the best and most pleasing to me. I'm giving the Yamaha three stars. It's it got a great sound. It's very powerful, uh, but I will say it's on the brighter end of the spectrum. I'm also giving the Jean Paul three stars in this category. It's got a beautiful sound. Uh, it's not quite as powerful as the Yamaha, but it's on the darker end of the spectrum, which for me is more pleasing. Uh, it really comes down to what sort of a sound you're looking for. The laid, I'm giving two stars uh, because the sound is is really quite good, it's very powerful. Uh, I take off one star because it's not quite as consistent over the full range. There are some spots, especially down low, I find where the sound is a little bit muffled, it's not quite as in tune. Now I'm gonna play 16 bars of the melody to my secret love on each one of these saxophones. First, the Yamaha, followed by the Jean Paul, and lastly, the Laid, I'm gonna be playing my mouthpiece, which is a New York Meyer 100 year anniversary, and this is a Rigotti number no. four read.
Now listen one more time to me play the bridge, since I think the upper register really highlights the difference in sound quality between these three horns. Now do me a favor and vote in the on-screen poll for the sound you preferred and then comment below and explain to us why. The next category is build quality and this is for me how well it's put together, the how well it operates mechanically straight out of the box and the quality of the materials and parts used to put it together. Once again I'm giving the Yamaha three stars. <laughs> this is really built to the same standards as a lot of professional instruments. Very good job on this. The Jean Paul is put together very well. The parts used are excellent quality. Uh, when doing my mechanical overview of it, I really had trouble finding any flaws with it. So I'm giving the Jean Paul three stars as well. Great job on that. The laid saxophone, although it did play well out of the box, I did have to do a few adjustments. Um, to get it playing really its best. I had to do a couple very minor repairs. The parts they use are not the best quality, the pads in particular, so that's why I'm only going to give it one star for build quality. The next category is repairability. All saxophones are going to need some maintenance done to them regularly, and from time to time, accidents happen and you'll need to get it repaired. Since the Yamaha has been the gold standard student alto saxophone for so long, the parts are readily available in just about any repair shop. And every repair technician is going to be intimately familiar with this instrument, how to take it apart, put it back together. They're easy to work on. So Yamaha is getting three stars. The Jean Paul, it's somewhat of a newcomer, uh, so repair technicians are not going to be as familiar with it. They may not have the exact parts for this instrument in their shop. However, uh, the company Jean Paul stocks all of the parts in the United States and they also have repair centers in multiple locations. So I'm giving the Jean Paul two stars for the repairability and I'm sure that is something that's going to improve as more and more of these instruments are sold and can be found all over the place. A lot of people say that these cheap Chinese saxophones cannot be repaired. They can. I repaired this one in a video uh, just to show that it, it can be repaired like any other saxophone. Um, so the problem lies is when you bring it to the repair technician, they might frown upon this instrument and they might say to you something like, well, that instrument is so cheap, it's not worth fixing it because you could just buy a new one for the price uh, I'm going to charge you to fix whatever broke on it. Since I don't know where to get specific parts for this if you ever were to need them, I'm just going to give it one star for repairability. It is repairable just like any other saxophone, but it's not going to be as easy as getting these two repaired. Next category is the case. The case that your saxophone comes with is extremely important, uh, especially when it comes to repairability. A poor quality case will result in your saxophone needing more repairs, more maintenance, because it's going to get banged around inside that case all the time. The Yamaha comes with an excellent case. No complaints there. It's got the great backpack straps, the pocket to put sheet music or whatever else you need in there. It's got great protection for the instrument. It doesn't move around in there. Three stars for the Yamaha. The Jean Paul comes again with an amazing case. I love the case that the Jean Paul uh, saxophone comes with. Again, I'm giving it three stars. It basically is on par with the Yamaha case. The Laid, I'm giving zero stars for the case. The saxophone moves around inside the case a lot 
Um, I wouldn't recommend using that case for this instrument. If you were to buy this instrument, I would try to get a better case for it right away. Otherwise you risk the horn getting damaged just from being transported from point A to point B. Next category is accessories. Aside from the case, each one of these saxophones comes with a range of accessories. They all have a mouthpiece uh, that is playable. Uh, the Yamaha has the best mouthpiece out of the three. The Jean Paul comes with a very playable and good mouthpiece. And the laid mouthpiece is also playable, not so great. They've all got ligatures. Uh, the Yamaha and the Jean Paul have very good ligatures. The one that came with the laid saxophone, eh. I'm only giving the Yamaha two stars for accessories though because they don't put a swab in the saxophone. The Jean Paul, I'm giving three stars for the accessories because yes, they have a good mouthpiece, they have a good ligature, they include a reed with it, but they also include a swab. The Laid, I'm only giving two stars because they fill, literally the case is full of accessories and most of them are unnecessary or useless. Like why are you putting gloves in a saxophone? The gloves serve no purpose for a saxophone. They did put a nice swab in there, two swabs, one for the neck and the mouthpiece as well, but there's other stuff in there that we don't need, like a mute that, that doesn't really do anything. So I'd like to see saxophones like this come with the essentials, the stuff that's important, and don't just fill this, the, the case up with a bunch of junk that we don't need. And the last category is overall value. The Yamaha has always been a sound investment, but Nowadays, things have changed and it's quite expensive. So as I've said before, you can buy a Yamaha, you can resell it and, and get back a lot of your initial investment down the road if you do have to sell the instrument. Uh, but it's a big outlay of cash in the beginning. So I'm giving the Yamaha two stars for overall value because nowadays you could spend a whole lot less and get an instrument that's gonna do everything that this one does. It might not hold its resale value as well, time will tell, but the initial investment is so much less than the Yamaha. So I'm giving three stars for overall value to the Jean Paul. As far as the laid saxophone goes, I'm giving it two stars for overall value because the price is so low to start with. It's, it's basically just over half the price of this one. Uh, so it's about a quarter of the price of this saxophone. So, you know, price is usually a very important factor in anyone's decision on what to buy. And, you know, if you really are on a limited budget and need to spend the absolute minimum, you can buy one of these and you're fine. Uh, it's going to play for you. It's going to do the job. But as with anything else, you may save a bit of money in the beginning, but that could end up costing you more long-term. So after tallying up all of our scores, the Jean-Paul AS400 is the clear winner with 20 out of a possible 21 stars. The Yamaha is a close second with 19 stars and the Laid only got 10 stars. So my recommendation for the best one out of these three has to be the Jean-Paul. Uh, price is a big factor in that. Uh, but to be totally honest with you, even if they were the same price, it would be a toss up between which one I would prefer, uh, the Yamaha or the Jean Paul. Not knowing anything else, if I'm not thinking about resale value down the road or anything else, just playing them, there's something about this horn that I really like the way it plays. The Yamaha plays great but it does have this brightness, which is a bit too much for my liking. If you were to go with one of these, which is just under $500, the money that you're saving from buying the Yamaha, you can go ahead and get yourself a nice mouthpiece, some great accessories, get some private lessons, get some courses over at bettersax.com, and then you'd still have some money left over to go see a concert of your favorite saxophonist, and get a subscription on Spotify to listen to some great music. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please click the thumbs up button and get yourself subscribed to the channel. We're almost at 100,000. Thank you so much for your continued support. 
Be sure to follow Better Sacks on Instagram and Facebook where I'm posting bonus content all the time. Thank you for watching and see you again very soon in another Better Sacks video.